The archives. Good place to hide a bomb. Now, where the hell do we start looking? I doubt it really matters. If it's here, we'll find it eventually. So what about that Jupiter stuff? We can talk while we look. Now get started. I turned to a corner of the room and began to look while Fi spoke. I'll start with the conclusion I've come to. Our consciousnesses seem to be able to jump through time. No, sorry. Through time isn't really accurate. It's more like we move through worlds. Worlds? Yes. I don't mean physical planets in this case. I'm talking about a whole different universe, really. Parallel worlds. W what? Do you know about the many worlds interpretation? Well, kind of. I think I've heard of it once or twice. Hmm. Oh, well, I'll just explain it. Let's say... Hmm. I don't care what it is, but could you move? Uh? -huh. Scratch your head, cross your arms, put your hands on your hips, anything? I had no idea what this was supposed to explain, but I did as she'd asked. Um. Hmm. You scratched your head just now, right? But you could have chosen to cross your arms or put your hands on your hips. Now, maybe there are other Sigmas in other worlds who did all of those things. All of these worlds and realities are branching off from one another. The choices you could have made branched off from the moment you decided what you were going to do just now. Every moment you make a decision, another universe branches off, on and on into infinity. Each of those branches is an alternate world. A world where a version of you did something different. Haven't you ever thought about what life would have been like if you'd made different choices? What if you'd gone to this high school instead of that one? What if you hadn't started a study group? What if you hadn't told that girl you liked her? What if? What if? But are those what ifs really just what ifs? Or are there other worlds out there where you did those things? Anyway, that's the many worlds interpretation in a nutshell. I've simplified it a lot. Doesn't have to be human actions though. I just used your actions to make the explanation easier to grasp. The actions of a cat, the flight of a bee, the movement of a microorganism, even fluctuations in air temperature. All these can change history. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second here. I'll let microorganisms slide, but there's no way that air is conscious of anything. Can you say for sure that you are? What? All of your actions are caused by the cells in your brain. If we go down a little further, then you could say all of your actions are the result of atoms or electrons or smaller particles we haven't even discovered yet. Are those atoms and electrons still you making a decision? At that level, how different are you from the air? I'd say not much. Human existence is just one part of reality. Falling in love is like a tulip blossoming. A tulip blossoming is like a tornado forming in South America. See what I'm saying? The only thing that really matters is the action of the most elementary particles of matter. That's where history happens. That's where universes branch out. Hey, you stopped. Are you done with that shelf? Oh, uh, no, not yet. Well, keep looking while I talk. How familiar are you with quantum physics? Never mind, don't answer that. I'll try and keep it simple for you. Hmm, let's see. Hey, hand me that box, will you? This one? Sure. I handed the box I'd been examining over to her. She set it down on the desk and opened the top. Also... Hmm. Ah, there's a stuffed lion over there. Perfect. He's part of Felide, too. With that, she grabbed the lion and tossed it unceremoniously into the box. 
She also took a weight and an ink jar and put them in next to the lion. All right. Everything's ready. Ready? Remember that book in the crew quarters about Schrodinger's cat? It relates to all this stuff I've been talking about. Anyway, come look at the box. What about looking for the... This will only take a minute. Now look. I shrugged and peered into the box. What do you see? Well, there's a stuffed lion. From now on, that's a cat. A living cat. This is important. Got it? Yeah, it's a cat meow. Oh, man. It's a cat meow. <laughs> this again? Sorry. I can't help it. I find that hard to believe. Ugh, fine. Maybe I can just ignore it. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. Alright, what else do you see? A weight that's not even a pond, and a jar of ink. Right. Now the weight is going to be radioactive material. And the jar of ink is full of poisonous gas. What? I'm getting out of here! Idiot. It's not really full of gas. This is just hypothetical. Imagine that it's full of gas. So, what's the weight? Radioactive material. And the jar of ink. It's full of poison gas. Exactly. Good work. Now, there's one other thing you need to know about the jar. If it's struck by any of the alpha particles the radioactive material emits, it'll break. These particles are emitted randomly, but there's a 50% chance that one of them will come into contact with the jar over the course of an hour. So let's close the lid. And pretend an hour has passed. Here's the question. Is the cat inside of the box alive or dead? You can't open the box to check. And you can't hit the box. Obviously, you can't shake it either. It's also been soundproofed, so the cat could be howling up a storm in there and you'd never know. Basically, you have no idea what's going on inside the box. Do you remember what happens if the alpha particles hit the jar? It breaks, gas fills the box, the cat inhales it, and death will whisk her away. And what if the jar doesn't break? The cat lives to tell the tale. Ha ha. And what are the chances of either of those things happening? About 50%. Uh-huh. So, what's your answer? Is the cat alive or dead? I can't possibly know. Then guess. It's not hard. Alive or dead. Um. The cat is... Pause for dramatic effect. Alive. Nope, you're wrong. It's dead? That's wrong too. Then what's the right answer? The answer is that it's in a state where it is neither dead nor alive. What? How does that make any sense? It's an extrapolation of something we see at the atomic level. We don't know if an atom is spinning upward or downward until we measure it. Before it's measured, those two possibilities coexist. But as soon as the measurement is taken, obviously, only one possibility is the truth. That's what's happening with the alpha particles. Since we can't know when they were emitted or where, we only know the probability that they'll impact the jar. Because we can't observe anything that's happening in the box, that becomes the entire system. In other words, the box is like the atom. We don't know how the cat's life or death situation has resolved itself until we look at it. Until we do, it's just a bunch of possibilities. Do you get it? If the cat in the box is possibilities... Then it's both alive and dead. Right. So, let's open the lid. And when we do, all the possibilities will collapse into a single truth. Meow. What a relief, huh? Looks like the cat's alive. Anyway, that's Schrodinger's cat. The many worlds interpretation is one theory for explaining that weirdness. So there's another world out there where this cat died? Yeah, that's the idea.
Looks like that cat tick of yours cleared up. Yeah. Well, your story was pretty insane. insane. You don't think so? Just the idea of something being alive and dead at the same time. And if the moment the lid is open determines whether or not the cat's dead, then... It's almost like events in the future can determine the past. I mean, the cat doesn't die when you open the lid, so it must have already been dead. Exactly. You've experienced it, haven't you? What on earth are you talking about? Think back. Remember round two of the AB game? When you chose Betray, what was my vote? Ally. But what happened this time? I chose Ally and you chose Betray. Right. And both times, I put in my vote a full minute before the deadline. When did you push the button? Right before the deadline. I see. Well, that makes us a little easier to explain. If you chose Betray, then my vote was Ally. If you chose Ally, then my vote was Betray. But I made my choices a whole minute before you made yours. Don't you think that's strange? You do see what I'm saying, don't you? That my choice in the future altered your action in the past. Yeah. From your perspective, there's no other way to interpret it. Now that I thought about it, round one had been the same. When I'd chosen ally, Alice had chosen betray. And when I'd chosen betray, she'd done the opposite. Look at this die. I found it over there. Let me give you one last example. As she spoke, she tossed the die into the box and quickly shut the lid. All right. Answer this question. What number is the die on? I have a feeling it's three. Okay. I'm going to open the lid. Good job. You got it right. That was just a fluke. Was it? Huh? Let's think about what was going on before I opened the lid. What number was the die on? Three, of course. Haven't you been paying attention? The die is still a collection of atoms, isn't it? I don't think you can reasonably suggest that it was made of some different kind of matter. Wait, so you're saying that before you opened the lid, the die was on all the numbers? Uh-huh. That's one way to look at it, at least. And then when you opened the lid, it was just one number. Or, it might have become that number when you declared which one it was. Huh? Wait, what do you mean? Your choice in the future has an effect on the past. That's crazy. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. We got a little off topic there, but I think I made my point. Reality separates off into an infinite number of branches for each and every possibility. You and I seem to be able to jump from branch to branch. Of course, our bodies aren't doing the jumping. Our consciousnesses just sort of dive into other versions of ourselves in other worlds. Whoa. I think I get it now. That's how you knew my name, right? You jumped in from another world. That's how you knew all those other things you shouldn't have known. Yeah. That's the best I can figure out, at least. Unfortunately, it seems like we don't retain all our memories when we jump. Maybe we only remember particularly important things. I'm not sure how it works. But whatever the reason, it seems to be fairly limited. And often, we don't seem to remember jumping at all. Things will just sort of pop up. That's why when someone asks us how we know X, all we can think of to say is, I just knew. Yeah. What's causing this, then? I don't remember ever doing this before, so why would it start now? If we knew that, I don't think 
we'd be having so much trouble. It's just... Just what? Well, I'm pretty sure it has to do with why we're locked up in here. There's no way this doesn't have something to do with whatever Zero Senior is trying to do. Why would he have left that Schrodinger's cat book in the crew quarters? Hmm. You aren't kitten, are you? Maybe this is some sort of huge Schrodinger's cat experiment. And all nine of us are locked up inside the box, right, Meow? What if you've got it backwards? Backwards? We're outside of the box. And the rest of the world is inside. Then the moment we step out of this place... Yeah. We might be determining the history of the world outside. No way. I had a thousand other questions, but before I could open my mouth to ask them... Oh good! There you are! Did something happen? Yes! We found it! Found what? What do you mean, what? What else could we find? The bomb! The other antimatter bomb. The number two bomb is in the control room. Is this it? Yeah. This is one of them, all right. And it's number two, apparently. Well, at least we found them all now. No. There could be more. Like Kay said. There might be a number four bomb out there. We have no way to know. Did you tell anyone else about this, Clover? Well, um, not really. But, uh, I wasn't the first person to find it. Who was? Kay and Luna. After they found it, they came to the infirmary and told the rest of us. Who was in the infirmary? Everyone. Tenmyoji and Dio were there. So were Alice and Clark, of course, although they were still asleep. So everyone who wasn't asleep knows about the bomb. I see. Yeah. There's nobody else here, though. Where'd they all go? Right after we came here to look at the bomb, they all left. They were going to go look for you two. What about Alice and Quark? They're the same. Still sleeping. We checked them out just to be sure, but they seemed fine. That's good. Fine, I looked at one another and let out a small sigh of relief. Oh, right. I checked everybody's bracelets when we were in the infirmary. Did you want to know what they were? It took her only a moment to explain. Alice was a green solo. And Cork was a blue solo. Dio's bracelet made him a yellow pair. And Tenmyoji was a cyan pair. So, what are our options for groups? The next set of doors to open are going to be the white doors. That means we'll have to mix our colors so that we get white. Phi laid out what would... what... Phi laid out what that would mean. Option A. Phi and Tenmyoji, Cyan, would pair with me, red. K and Dio, yellow, would pair with Quark, blue. Clover and Luna, magenta, would pair with Alice, green. Huh? There's only one option? Yeah. Any other combinations don't make white. What about Alice and Quark? Luna said it's going to be a while until they wake up. We'll just have to carry them. The secondary doors won't open without three bracelets. And if we can't open them... Yeah, we'll get penalized. Exactly. Don't worry about Alice. I'm on her team. Are you saying you can carry her? Yeah. Well, I can get Luna to help me. True, I'm sure she'd be happy to help. What about Quirk? He's on Kay's team. There shouldn't be any issues there. Well, we still need to figure out what we're going to do about this bomb. Alice said we should be safe as long as it's not triggered with the remote. Maybe, but we can't just leave them here forever. I mean, if they go off, 
then everything in like a couple hundred kilometers is gonna get fried. Wait, a couple hundred kilometers? What are you talking about? That bomb should only have about as much explosive power as a ton of TNT. Which is nothing to sniff at, but that's nowhere near the kind of yield you're talking about. It could be. What if these bombs are just, like, the detonator? Oh, oh! You mean there might be a bunch more anti-hydrogen around here somewhere? Yep, right over there. The reactor. Yeah. There are supposed to only be 18 antimatter reactors in the whole world, if that's one of them. Then there's a lot of anti-hydrogen. How much is a lot? Three and a half kilograms. Th three and a half? That's like 10,000 times more than Alice's 350 milligrams. If there really is that much, and if it does explode, then we would be looking at an explosion roughly 10,000 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. No. That's... that's insane. Wait. Clover, how did you know that? Know what? That stuff about antimatter reactors. Um, well, that's a... Uh, during my training, they... Training for what? Uh, my job? Ah, uh, of course. I didn't realize waiters these days needed to memorize how many operational antimatter reactors there were worldwide. Or how much fuel each one of those reactors might be storing. You don't work at a cafe, do you? Did you hear about that from Alice? Yeah. Oh. Well, um, she's right then. And why are you using antimatter reactors at a cafe? That's, uh, what we call the coffee machines. W what? Are you fucking with me? I'm telling you the truth. I work at a cafe. It just might, um, be a kind of fake job to divert attention. I think they call it a cover. What? Then what's your real job? I'm sorry. I really can't tell you anything else. Why not? It's classified. Classified by who? The government? The government? That's right. Alice said it was her job to eliminate enemies of the state or something. So you two do work together. Uh, oh no! Check your bracelets! How much time do we have left? What are you talking about? How long until the doors open? Come on, quickly! Damn. We were supposed to have met up five minutes ago. I'm heading back then. Remember, we're supposed to meet at the infirmary. You guys hurry back, okay? Bye! Hey! You haven't... Damn it. And she's gone. Fine. She's right, you know. We need to get going. Hold on. I need to check something really quick. Uh, what? 